definitely think there's going to be a lot of people with a lot of opinions and you know, that's okay. If you feel like your opinion needs to be heard online that badly, then just let us have it. You know her from RuPaul's Drag Race season nine and season four of All Stars. And Pheromone is here setting the record straight. The former contestant is accusing Ariana Grande of intentionally stealing her look in Ariana Grande's Seven Rings video. And Farrah joins us now exclusively to tell her side of the story. Farrah, welcome to ET Live. Hi, thanks for having me. Good to see you again outside of the workroom. I know, I feel like I, the last time I saw you, you were in your underwear. True story, <laughs> true story. Another true story is that that you feel that our Ariana Grande stole your look. Set well, straight. listen, I don't, I, I would be, it would be insane to think that it was Ariana Grande directly, but I do think her team definitely um, 100% uh, reached out to a local LA um, seamstress and, uh, you know, sent a photo of me for inspo and had her iconic seven rings look recreated. Let's pull up your tweet because this is the tweet that started everything off to uh, ye yesterday, as a matter of fact. Ariana should give me a cut of that 10 million referring to her <laughs> reported lawsuit with Forever 21, who yes. she is uh, uh, accusing them of using her music and likeness from Seven Rings, as well as hiring a model that looks strikingly like her. So, yeah. Kettle Pop Black, maybe, literally, is, is, what, you're, is what you're feeling. Yeah, and you know, I honestly had no idea that my tweet was going to blow up so much. Um, I thought maybe it was going to get ugh, two or 3,000 of my fans being like, oh, yeah, that, you know, sure. But I guess, you know, um, internationally people kind of see the similarities. Well, you, you, you mentioned your tweet. Over 32,000 retweets, 150,000 likes, and 3,000 comments as we've gone to, to air, which has some pretty pointed comments from her, her fan base. Were you afraid of any backlash posting that? Well, listen, like, <clears throat> ever since I heard about the lawsuit a few days ago, I had kind of been, like, letting my emotions about it simmer a little bit. Um, and I, I kept going back and forth about posting something or not posting something because obviously I knew that she has a very strong fan base and I knew that they probably weren't going to like me, um, you know, <laughs> spilling the tea like that. But um, I think that... I just, ultimately, I see it too often where so many big millionaire names will um, take ideas and creative, um, you know, a little bit more than creative inspiration from, uh, you know, queer and other minority artists out there. And I felt like I, I, very, what is the word? Like, I felt like I just needed to just say something, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Like, and I was very reactive in the moment. And, you know, my tweet might read a little bit harsh and, um, you know, because I felt that way in that moment. Sure. That's how you um, feel. Because it, it kind of does suck, you know, the this look was a collaborative design between me and, um, you know, a 21-year-old kid out of Louisiana. He's so young. He, you know, after we came up with all this and we got all the supplies for it, he spent months, like, individually stoning this. We it, have it here. Yes, here it is right here, guys. That's actually the back. Let's show him the front. Yes. There we go. So there's the iconic corset with, um, you know, the danglies. And then we've got our little bra that goes right on top. Um, so I just ultimately, I felt bad for him. I was annoyed myself. And, you know, I think that <clears throat> I don't want, I don't want to sue anybody. You know what I mean? I'm not here to like sue Ariana Grande. That's so ridiculous. I am such a fan of hers, but I do think, you know, you should cover your ground a little bit before, you know, you want to so intensely come for someone for taking something from you. Well, you mentioned in the tweet, because it was three parts in the tweet, you know, you, yeah. you had said that the people... It was a little me. rant. <laughs> yeah, and, but, I mean, you were, very, you were very open and very candid about how you felt. As you said, you let it simmer. You mentioned that her team is to blame, but ultimately she makes the final decision. So you also talked about letting it simmer... Seven Rings has been out for months, since January, in fact. Yeah. Had you been feeling this way for all those months and, and didn't say anything? Or had, were there other conversations that were had before you actually took action on Twitter? I'm glad you asked me this. So I actually did tweet about it in January because a lot of my fans were 
um, tagging me in it and sh uh, sharing like photos of the side by side. And I was like, oh, this is a flattering coincidence, you know, um, because I'm, a, as I said, I'm a fan. And um, I didn't think that, you know, there was any possibility in my mind that they could have actually taken a photo of me and wanted the exact same, I don't know. Um, it didn't honestly grind my gears until I saw the lawsuit, to be fair. Um, and I've also, <clears throat> I, part of my tweet mentions that I actually met the um, seamstress that put together Ariana's version. Mm -hmm. And they told me straight up that Ari's team was like in love with my look and they wanted a repeat of it. Could she do it? So why don't you lean on, and just, um, this is a question that your fans are, having, are asking is, imitation's the best form of flattery? Oh, absolutely, but honey, when there's $10 million involved, it's like, uh, you know what I mean? It just, you can't <laughs> help but feel some type of way. You just can't help it. But um, I've, I've known that, uh, I had met with Ari's seamstress like about a month ago. It didn't bother me, because I was like, oh wow, so I'm not crazy, she did copy the look. Um, but like I said, you know, <sighs> when, <laughs> All of a sudden, a giant clothing brand is getting sued for $10 million for copying things from her video. And, you know, it just affected me in a certain way. Makes but, sense. Absolutely. But, um, you know, I want everybody to know that I love Ariana Grande and um, I wish her great luck with her lawsuit. You said something <laughs> that was very powerful in your tweet, excuse me, about stealing from queer artists. I think that resonated with a lot of people. Definitely uh, sh struck me. Yeah. Um, just just reading that. Elaborate on that, because I think there is more to to that sentiment than what people are, 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 are I guess, um, interpreting. What made you want to say that? So one thing that I have noticed, especially since doing Drag Race, I've, I've been able to build a lot of connections and friendships with uh, designers from all over the world that are underground, that don't have the platform to have, you know, celebrities or whatever wearing their stuff. And it's too often um, a subject where I'm seeing uh, friends of mine having their own personal designs stolen from multi-million dollar uh, names and brands. And it's just sad, you know? I feel like if, you're, if you are feeling so inspired by somebody, give them a platform. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like... If you like something that they did or that they came up with, hire them to come up with something for you. Buy something from them. You know what I mean? Like, don't go behind, um, you know, their back and try and steal it and then backpedal. I think we've seen this happen um, with... Actually, I probably shouldn't name any other But it's names, happened before. I mean, they, it has happened right. before. It's nothing new. And I just hope that... Um, if there's anything that could come from my um, uh, visibility right now, it's that maybe um, other teams of big names or big brands uh, could maybe uh, include and incorporate the uh, queer and other minority artists that are underground into what projects they're doing. Awesome. Well, you know, Ariana Grande has legions of fans, one being her brother, Frankie Grande. And oh, he's e so cute. You e e e e love Frankie. <laughs> he's so cute. Uh, E.T.'s Lauren Zima caught up with Frankie and asked him about, not only about her drama with Forever 21, but about your accusations. Take a look. Oh. And I, oops. That's like, I mean, there's just always drama. You know what I'm saying? And like, it's just whether or not you're gonna dial into that particular element or whether you're gonna like stay above it and like rise above it and just like, you know, reign supreme. And that's what I feel like she's doing. You're not in control of the results. Yeah. And like the sooner that you get that anyone, like the better you're going to live your life. So just stay out of the results, guys. Right now, Farah, what would you like to say to Ariana and her fans? What's the message you want them to get? Because you've, um, I feel that people have misinterpreted yeah. what your tweet was saying and what it meant. So what would you like to tell the fans and Ariana? I think what I would like to tell, um, first and foremost, Ariana, is that, um, you know, there's a lot of people that can relate with what she's going through with her Forever 21 lawsuit. Forever 21 was not cool for that. They were not cool for that in any way. I don't even know why they thought they could get away with that. But I just want her to think about 
all of the artists that look up to her as well. And um, maybe, you know, in the future, when you're coming, when you're with your design team, maybe just like go over things a little bit more um, and just be conscientious of, you know, the effect that, the, the way that people could feel the same way you're feeling towards Forever 21. But um, also, I just think she's such a sweetheart. I love her. So <laughs> we love Ariana here. And to Ariana's fans, you know, <clears throat> I don't really expect them, a lot of them, to understand a lot of this. A lot of them are so young. And from what I've seen on my social media, it seems like um, a lot of them are just resorting to calling me fat and, uh, you know, ugly and whatever and, like, telling me to kill myself. So... Um, I just hope that, like, the Ariana fans know that, like, yes, my tweet might have seemed a little bit harsh in the moment. I was worked up, but, like, you know, I'm not hating on our girl. I'm not suing our girl. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, let's not spread hate, guys. Great message. Speaking of something positive... What is pheromone up to these days? What do you have next uh, going on for you? What's I know you're a busy girl. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> well, um, listen, I'm not I'm not really on here to try and uh, monetize or like <laughs> benefit on any of my pro projects for um, this uh, publicity, but. Um, I guess if I do have to say something, um, I have been formulating a highlighter product that's going to be coming out with Trixie Cosmetics. If y'all know Trixie Mattel, yes, she is... Yes, love um, Trixie. An all-star. Drag Race Royalty. Yes, all, a Hall of Famer. So um, we're working on that. It's coming along really well. And um, I hope to see everybody on the road. We love it. Well, Farah, thank you so much for coming to ET Live and sharing your side of the story. All the best to you. And uh, we look yeah. forward to everything you have coming down the pipe and your new beauty line. Oh, thank you so much.